Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Hernan Cias here, host of the Business Bros podcast, all by my lonesome. I'm here today because I, I got time and I need to record some stuff. I'm um, going on a trip this coming week, and so I got to make sure we have enough content to put out some new stuff for you guys each and every single day. So let me just start off with the promos. By the end of this week, we're going to know exactly what we're going to be doing for the homeless this year. Last year, we did 365 pairs of shoes. You guys helped us meet and exceed that. So thank you guys very, very much for that. Uh, we're going to let you know what we're doing here soon, so stay tuned for that. Show sponsor for today is Pipeline in insurance. James is the insurance bro. If you guys have any insurance needs, maybe you have uh, a need for your homeowner's policy because you got clients that need to get into the home. Maybe you got an auto policy that's coming up. Maybe you own a small business. You need a bond, something like that. We're here to help you guys get every type of insurance coverage you need. How about this one though? What if you guys want to add insurance into your business? Maybe you own a mortgage office or your broker at your office, or maybe you have a tax office that's opening up. Look, adding insurance as an additional revenue source into your business can seem a little daunting, except we're the type of guys that are going to come out here and take care of it for you. We're going to do all the heavy lifting. We're going to do all the servicing. We're going to handle all that stuff for you. All you got to do is jump through a couple little hoops and 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com is where you're going to get the information you need so that you can get paid on those sorts of things. Add an additional revenue source into your business. It's going to be the best thing you can do. Multiple revenue streams, opens up the doorway to bigger and better things for your business, buys you more time, gives you the flexibility that you need to take risks and grow your business. Hernan C is here, uh, and I'm I'm excited for today's show, mainly because I was watching football this morning. Uh, It's Sunday, by the way. So I'm watching some football, and it kind of got me thinking, because we're we're in playoffs right now, right? So uh, I just finished watching the uh, Vikings defeat the Saints, and it was a very, very good game. I mean, both teams are tremendous teams. And, and it, it kind of got me thinking of what's going on with everybody uh, in, in today's era. So, so right now, we just crossed over 2019 to 2020. So it wasn't only uh, a, a happy new year, which, you know, happy new year to all of you guys. It wasn't only just a, the changing of a year. It's also the changing of a decade. And so there's a lot of extra reflection that goes into a lot of these things when we start the beginning of something. And it kind of got me thinking of, of the football game that I'm watching, right? So we have these teams that right now are in the playoffs. These are the teams that have all already either won their division or had better records than some of these other teams and they're fighting for that championship game right this is at the end of the season and right now we're at the beginning and I remember at the beginning of the football season I specifically remember because we do our fantasy football draft so we're always thinking about you know who's going to be playing or watching pre pre-game stuff but when you watch the beginning of a season of, of, of any team whether it doesn't matter the sport um, it doesn't matter whether you're an entrepreneur or that too it, it, you, you always have the same type of feeling at the beginning you feel uh, unstoppable right? Like, like nothing is going to get in your way. Like you, you have this idea, this, 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 uh, vision of where you're going to be and you have all this excitement and all this energy and you're going to get out there and you're going to go do it and you're going to be the best thing. And it's going to be the, the, the most awesome experience ever. And every t- sports team starts off this way. Every single one, right? They come into the season, they've had off season, they've healed their, you know, mended their wounds. They're, they're feeling much better, like hundred percent as far as physical, uh, you know, physically the way they're feeling, they're ready to come into the season with with uh, analyzing all uh, everything they've done in the past. They've improved on a couple things. They're excited to get on the field and play. And and that happens to, to a lot of entrepreneurs. We have this idea that pops into our head. And uh, maybe it's an existing business. Maybe it's a new venture. But we have this idea that pops into our head and we're super excited about it. We can't sleep at night. Uh, we toss and turn. Everything that we're doing on, during the day gives us an idea as to what we want to do in this thing. We start to reflect back on some of the things we've done in the past. Maybe some ventures that we've tried that didn't pan out so well. But what did we learn from those? We're ready to make the changes and we're ready to take on whatever is in front of us and it's going to be the next greatest thing. So the excitement that you have in both of these, they kind of parallel each other, right? So we both have this initial excitement, but what happens after the first couple games of the football season? What happens after the first couple weeks of the entrepreneur's venture? Like this, this is where things tend to fall off. And this is where where we tend to make mistakes ourselves and not put us in a position to win. So you got to look at some of some of the greatest uh, coaches, some of the greatest players out there. What do they do to push through the 
hurdles that they come across. Tom Brady, you may like him, may not like him. He's one of the, he is the GOAT, right? He's the, one of the greatest uh, football players of all time. The guy's freaking in his 40s and he's looking younger and younger every year. I don't know how he does it. But if you ever watch some of the um, behind the scenes stuff, some of the interviews that they have with him, Facebook did a whole series with him where, where they were going over his daily routines and what he does to prepare. The guy is intentional in everything he does. Everything from the water he drinks to the things he eats to when he wakes up in the morning to how he trains to what he studies is all geared towards the same focus, which is to become a better football player, to lead his team to victory. I saw some of the stats earlier that they were talking about Tom Brady and and playoffs. He's been in 40 playoff games, 40, 30 of them he's won, 10 he's lost. 40 playoff games for somebody to have that kind of career that's a dominating career and see when we look at those kinds of stats when we look at the those those big accomplishments that Tom Brady has or or that the Patriots have for example uh we always look at the end game we look at the, the the very tip of the mountain the top part the success the shiny object but what we fail to notice what we often fail to do is to see everything that happens beneath it you don't pay attention to the water he's drinking. You're not paying attention to the, what he's eating. You're not paying attention to his daily routine, to his work ethic. And because you're not paying attention to that, you just see the greatness and you assume that, you know what? I can do that too. And as an entrepreneur, we tend to do the same type of thing. We look at all these people that we want to be like, that we aspire to be like. We look at the Gary V's in the world, if you're in the real estate space or you're in a small business space, right? Or we look at the Tom Ferries or we look at the whoever we're, whoever is at the top of their game, the Russell Brunsons, the Tony Robbins, all these different people that have succeeded, that have achieved a level of success that we too want to achieve. And we think, I can do that. I can stand in front of a stage and talk to people. I can sell some stuff. I can whatever X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. I can throw a football. I can run a 40. But do you realize the consistency of what needs to be done every single day in order to hone in that craft, to look at every single aspect? I mean, think about it. Tom Brady's drop, right? So a quarterback, a drop for a quarterback. So this is what what that means. So, um, when you see the quarterback saying, ready, down, set, hut, hut, hike, and they get the ball snapped to him, the, the center hands him the ball, then there's a, a, a drop. So, in other words, the quarterback is going to take a few steps backwards, and as he's taking steps back, he has fundamentals in his feet, he's lined up his hands the right way, he's scanning the field, he knows exactly where players are going to be, he looks for the most opportune moment, and then he releases the ball. Okay, that sounds simple. Oh, I can get that. I can get the ball from the center. I can drop back. I can look at my receiver. I can throw a pass. But there's much more to that. Anybody can do those steps. But the way Tom Brady prepares is how many times has he snapped the ball so that he gets the ball in the right grip? How many times has he worked with the center so the center holds the ball to position it the right way? So that that split second of adjusting the ball, he doesn't have to worry about that. It's already in the position that it needs to be. What about the steps that he's dropping back? He knows exactly how many steps he needs to drop back in the motion that he needs to drop back. If he drags his feet, he could trip on a center or a guard that's pulling, you know, somebody that's coming across the field. If he's not up high when he goes to throw the ball, maybe he's going to, you know, drop his shoulder just a little bit and the ball's going to not go in the right direction. If he starts off and he's looking in the wrong direction, he's going to miss the route because it's maybe not the right progression order. Look at these things are things that a quarterback does and that's just in the drop sequence. What about the way the defense is lined up? What about, you know, when you think about that, that really can get overwhelming. And all of a sudden it becomes like a major thing to be an NFL quarterback, which by the way, it is a major thing to be an NFL quarterback. But the preparation that goes into it is huge. So because there's so much work that gets done by an NFL quarterback with so much effort and preparation to become better, not just to better his own craft, but to also lead a team so that they're all thinking the same type of way, so that they're all running in unison, so that everybody knows where everybody's supposed to be. An entrepreneur faces a lot of the same dilemmas. And the, the, the most common part of what an entrepreneur faces is not even honing their own craft, right? We throw on the jersey, like we throw on the Tom Brady jersey, and it's gonna be like our entrepreneur jersey. So we throw that thing on, 
And we feel like we're the rock star, right? We, we're wearing that E on our chest. We're, we're the entrepreneur, yes. And we tell everybody, yeah, we got a, we got a business. Yeah, I have a, I have a business. It's a, you know, I sell real estate. Or, you know, I own an insurance agency. And, and, and we, we talk about it like it's already at the top of that mountain. Like we're already trying to brag about the successes and the accolades that are at the top of this mountain. And we haven't even put in any of the effort to get there. And the truth is, everyone's guilty of it. I'm guilty of it myself, right? There are things that I know on a daily basis that I should be focusing my attention on so that our company can get bigger or our company can get easier, uh, uh, our, our, employee, our employees, yeah, for one, are, uh, have a, a detailed job description so they know what they need to do. Maybe we can sit down and talk to them on a regular basis to see what improvements they see, they need, they see in the office that can make things better. Or what about our, our agents? These are our 1099 people, right? What is it that they need in order to be a little more successful? Have I asked that question in the last you know two weeks, three weeks, one week, month, two months? How do you know what you're offering is helping the people that you're supposed to be helping? Have you asked the question? There's all kinds of ways that you can look into your business and find ways to improve on. But do we do it? Probably not because it takes a little bit more effort. Because we know that if we lift that stone and uncover something, we're going to have to deal with that problem. And see, as entrepreneurs, we love the spotlight of being able to say we have the flexibility or say that we're working on something big. But when it really comes down to it, when we have to do the work, most of the time, we don't focus our attention on those things that are going to get us to the next level. We kind of put those aside. Yeah, I'll get to that in a little bit. Right. So if you think of it in the football terms, you're like, you know, I love the accolades of, of putting, you know, uh, scoring a touchdown in the in the big game and everybody, you know, lights flashing, fireworks going, everybody's happy. But when it comes down to it on Monday morning, you're just going to sleep in a little more. You're not going to take that extra hour to look at that game film. You, you know what? I'm going to skip the run this morning because it's a little cold. So, you know, that's OK. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I, I don't really need to run today. And it's these little things that we as humans, we do it, I do it. Those little things that had we just decided to take that extra step, maybe, you know what, maybe maybe it was the morning run, right? Maybe it was, I'm going to get up and go run in the morning. I don't, I don't want to run, it's cold. But you got up and you started walking anyways. And you made a, you know, put a sweater on. You're like, you know what, today I'm not going to run. I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk. Why not? Why not take that extra step? Yeah, walk might turn into, you know what, I am feeling a little better. I, I think I'm going to jog a little bit. You know what, this jog's feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for my run. And before you know it, you did what you were supposed to do because you forced yourself to take that action to do it. And as entrepreneurs, we do the same thing. I'm, I'm 100% guilty of it. My email inbox should have zero bolded in, emails in it. I don't know about you guys, but mine doesn't. Why? Because there's stuff sitting in there that I haven't got to yet. Now, it's the beginning of 2020. So what do you think I did the very first uh, at the beginning of the week? 2020 rolled around the corner. I opened up my laptop. I was gung ho. I'm going to answer all these emails. I'm going to clear them all out. I'm going to get these things done, which is great. But if you fast forward a couple days, I mean, we're we're in January 5th already. I am beginning to lag on my own ambition. And if you put that back into football terms, it's not even the first game of the season. I'm not even one week into the season and I'm already cutting corners. The difference between the greats and everybody else are those little things that you do on a daily basis that get you to the next level. Is it that they do every single thing at 100% caliber every single time the best way they can? Probably not. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be the first to say that I'm, I'm pretty sure Tom Brady doesn't give everything 100% of the time till he can't breathe and passes out. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But he goes through his routine every single day. That I can guarantee you that he does. You have something that you need to take care of every single day in your business. There are things in your business that require your attention on a regular basis. And there are other things that do not require your attention that you can hand off to you to your admin staff, that you can sub uh, subcontract to somebody else, that you can hire a virtual 
excuse me, a virtual assistant for. But do we make those moves? Do we make those things happen? No, because those are the easy pieces of the work. So to justify our day so that we feel like we are working, we bog ourselves down with some of those mundane tasks that we could have had somebody else do. And instead, we do them. Instead, we pretend to do the work that we need to do instead of actually focusing our attention on moving our business to the next level, instead of actually doing those things that we know will get to the next level. But those things are the difficult things. Those things are probably going to make us, you know, metaphorically, going to make us sweat or going to make us tired or are a little bit more difficult than those other tasks. But we will make an excuse for ourselves. We will do the easy work, the busy work, so that we don't have to do the actual work that gets us to the next level. And that, I think, is the biggest problem that most of us have. And you can relate this to pretty much anything. Same thing with going to the gym. This has happened to me in the last few weeks, right? And so I made it a point to reset my own mind when going to the gym and working on, my, on, my, on myself to get better. So when I go to the gym every single day, I run, I run three miles. This is the very first thing I do. Right. And I'm up to the point where I'm running it in about 26 minutes, about eight miles and 30, or about eight and a half minutes per mile. Um, but my body's got to has, has become adjusted to it. And so I need to push on to the next level. One of my one of the things I like to, to do is watch different motivational videos while I'm running or something that I'm learning. Right. And so I used to watch these videos with other people working out. And so one of them was The Rock. Right. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And one of the things that 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 Dwayne does that I think is really cool and really funny, too, is as he's working out, he'll yell at himself. Right. You see him get tired, get tired and he'll yell, focus, focus. And he like pushes himself he's he's not really staying focused to anybody else he's telling himself to focus right he's ready to push he's like focus focus and that's his way of telling himself you can do just a little bit more you can push just a little bit harder you can get to that next level because the he knows he understands that change the change he wants his muscular change his next level of strength lies in that discomfort in that point where he thinks he can't do it where he thinks it's impossible And he yells at himself, focus, just to give that extra little extra energy to push through. That's where his body starts to make a change. That's where the muscles break down and that's where they get stronger. That moment of focus. So when I'm at the gym, I don't yell focus. I tell myself, get tired. (laughs) That's my focus. Because I'll get to the point where I'm running and I feel my chest start to get, you know, warm, right? I start to have to breathe faster and I don't have hair. So when I sweat, it starts dripping all over the place. And I'll use that as an excuse to maybe step off real quick, wipe myself down, catch my breath and keep going. And I'll catch myself doing that. And I'll tell myself, just like the rock does, I'll tell myself, get tired. How long can I go at this level? How long can I push where I'm breathing really hard, where my legs, my quads are just feeling really tight? How long can I push at that uncomfortable level? Because I know that growth for me is on the other side of that. If I'm doing pull-ups, you know, you do the first five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, it starts to get really tight. It starts to get really hard. That's where I yell at myself, get tired. Uh, you push just a little bit more for that one more and then you maybe push just one more and you start to see progress you start to see progress i'm a little bit stronger now because i was able to push through that i can get to four five six seven eight nine push up pull-ups i can get to eight and a half minutes per mile i'm progressively getting better but just like everything else I find myself getting complacent at the gym. So I need to mix things up. I need to be consciously aware, consciously aware of the fact that these are the things that I'm doing to slow down, to become complacent in what I do. I and I and I constantly have to do that with myself all the time. Maybe it's a diet thing. Maybe I'll give you an example for me personally. There's times where I'll go through and and I'm not the healthiest eater, by the way. I don't I don't go out and, you know, have like acai bowls all the time or something like that. It's not, I, I, I should, but I don't. Right. And so um, but what I try not to do is I try not to overeat either. 
I, I really tend to eat like one, maybe two meals a day. I just eat when I'm hungry. I got so much stuff going on. I don't think when my stomach talks to me, that's when I go eat. It's probably not the best way, but that's how I do it. And when I do eat, um, I try to, I try to make sure that I eat. And then when I'm full, I'm done. And I probably won't eat again for you know a number of hours until I feel hungry again. But especially towards the holidays, or for me, sometimes it's like during during break from school, I tend to eh, eat a late night snack a little more. Do I need to eat? No, I don't need to eat. But do I want to eat? Sometimes I don't even want to eat. It's just, what else am I going to do? And so I find an excuse, right? I could have been in here recording a podcast to make sure that I'm ahead of things, or I can make myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and watch some more football. You know what I'm saying? Like we make these choices in life. And the, the biggest deal for me is I want to I wanna be able to start every single day like, like the football players start every single season with that kind of energy. The energy of I'm ready to take on the day. I'm so excited what's going to happen for, to, for, for, this, for this particular day. I have this much planned. I'm already prepared because I did all these things. That same excitement I want to be able to have every single day. But for some reason, I let complacency take over. How about you guys? I mean, think about that for a second. There's got to be something in your life that you want to improve upon, right? That you want to that you want to go in and, and develop to get a little bit better on. So what is it that you're benefiting from at this particular moment in time? Why is it that you are not doing that thing? Right? I, we had uh, we had Barbara Masonette on the show not too long ago, and she asked us one of those great questions was, what's the benefit you get from not working out? Right? What's the benefit you get from not doing the thing that you want to do? So the benefits you get from not working out, for example, are you get to sleep in, you get to eat what you want, you get to not worry about how your body looks, you get to not be tired, you know, all these different things. Or maybe you get tired because your body's not in great shape. But those are all benefits of what it is that you're doing on a regular basis. And those are bits and pieces of us becoming complacent. It's kind of like uh, when you when you see a, uh, a young kid... Um, you know, they just get up, they got energy, they run around, they go play, and then they come back, they sit down, go to sleep, get up the next day, do it again, run around and go play. Like at some point, we get, we grow up a little bit and we start to get complacent with some of the things we're doing. We don't get as excited for the same things that we did in the past. We want to improve on those things, right? So sometimes, you know, when, when you're young, going outside and going to the park, that was exciting. We don't really get to go outside that much. So we get to go to the park, we get to go play. It's, it's a fun time. We're outside, we're getting the sun rays. You know, we get to ride our bikes or our rollerblades, whatever it is. And then you come home, you go to sleep. And guess what? Next day, mom, I, mom and dad might say, we're going to do it again. Cool, we're excited, we get to do it again. But after a while, you're like, oh, well, we're going to go to that park again. I don't know if I want to go to that park. It happens to everybody at every single level of life. We become complacent. We come. We either we either are accustomed to this thing. We 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 are comfortable with where it's at, and we don't want it. We don't want to change anymore. Or worse, we get fed up with this one thing, and uh, you know it's not important. We're gonna go find something else. Happens to everybody. <laughs> I am a huge victim of. Um, when it comes to watching Netflix, for example, um, as soon as school starts, I don't have time very much for Netflix and TV and stuff like that because, um, you know, school takes up most of my day. And then I have a few hours in between, uh, when I get out of school to before I got the podcast where I can get a lot of things done for my, for, for whatever it is that I'm working on. And then I got podcast time and then I got some time with the family and, and, and then after I got family time and, and the kids go get their electronic time at the end of the day, then I hop back on my stuff and I get, I get a few hours of me time to do whatever it is I need to do, catch up emails, whatever. I only have so much time, but then I get on break. Right. So school's out. I don't have to teach in the morning. So I go to the gym early in the morning and I come home and I I could take a nap. Why do I take a nap? Because I can. (laughs) Right. That's it. That's it. That's the the easiest, most simplest excuse that any of you are going to have. Right. I don't have a justification for why. Well, 
in, in during the week when I'm in school, I'm, I'm in bed by like 9, 30, 10 o'clock because I know I got to get up early the next day and do it again. But when I'm on break, I end up going to bed around midnight. Why? Because I can. So if, if that is your excuse, like if you really don't have a justified answer, you might come up with something in your head to justify it, right? If my spouse was in front of me, I could probably tell her, well, it's because I was up late doing this and some sort of logical explanation that I need to, you know, come out with spew, spew out so I could have some sort of excuse as to why I stayed up till midnight and why I slept in till, you know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock on the weekend or whatever it's going to be, right? I have some sort of excuse that I'm going to come up with to justify Because I can. You all are in the same boat. And the greatest part about this, the greatest part about it is that excuse, because I can, could work both ways. You might be in the situation where you're going to go, you know, fall asleep late and, you know, sleep in and eat what you want because you can. Or you can change that paradigm. You can shift that perspective that you want. And... Focus every single day like it's the first day of the season. And understand that the goal is to be the best you you could possibly be every single day. Why? Because you can. You're going to go to the gym and you're not just going to go to the gym. You're going to actually try to sweat and try to get tired and you're going to focus. Why? Because you can. There's no other reason than you can. I can do it because I can do it. Now, where you point that energy is going to be completely up to you. Because I can is your choice. It is your responsibility. You're going to live the consequences of whatever choice you make, both on the physical, on the emotional, on the financial, whatever it is. You make the choice because you can. Quick little thing, you want to talk personal finance? Well, guess what? I went to Starbucks and 7-Eleven and I went and bought some clothes over here and I bought this fancy purse and I bought this nice car that I wanted. And uh, guess what? Over here next week, you know, you realize how broke you are. Why? Because you can. You chose to go buy these things. Like Gary Vee says, you chose to go buy dumb shit. This is why you don't have money to invest in the things that you want to invest in because you chose to buy the dumb shit. Why? Because I can You are in charge of your life. Every day is the beginning of football season. You can be in the playoffs if you're willing to be consistent every single day. If you're willing to be honest with yourself, if you're willing to say, it's because I can, that's why I work hard. It's because I can, that's why I get up early. It's because I can, that's why I achieve what I wanted to achieve. It's going to be completely up to you. All right, ladies and gents, thanks for letting me vent out some extra stuff for football season, some, you know, internal things that I end up going with. I'm sure some of you guys struggle with the same type of stuff. Um, If you guys have any questions for me, by the way, uh, maybe you want to hit me up and ask me some personal questions or motivational stuff or whatever you want. Maybe you just want to say hi. You can find me on any social media page at Business Bros Pod. My own email is Hernan at csfirst.com. You can find it right here on the little thing that I got right there. It is. Yep. It worked out pretty good. All right. So uh, make sure you guys uh, hit me up if you guys have any questions. Uh, uh, Pipeline Insurance is our show sponsor for today. So if you guys have any insurance needs, James is our insurance guy, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. Look, we want to offer you guys the opportunity to make some extra income. We want to cut you a check, but you got to find out how to do it. Maybe you have a tax office, maybe you have a mortgage office. We can help increase your bottom line without increasing any of your workload. We can show you how. Hit up James, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. And uh, we'll see you guys on the flip side. That's all we got for you guys today. Peace. And we're out.